Hi, Hello, Paul. Mayor. Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm uh, doing really well, and I'm excited to see the show tonight. Can I know. A little bit about what we can expect to see on tonight's premiere episode. Well, what you can expect to see is uh, the beginning of uh, what do we do now, coming off the closer. This is a um, major crimes division in the LAPD in with, with, with all of the same professional commitment and all of the same uh, extraordinary storytelling and humor and everything. But what we also have as characters is a very big dilemma. How does this particular group of people now reform itself and actually get the job done? And it's just fantastic. It's really exciting. And we've shot 10 episodes so far. And it, it really is a new show. And it still has the heart and soul of the old ones. So we're very, very excited. We think that this is going to be thrilling for the fans. Well, I was going to say, looking at what I've seen of the show already, I haven't seen tonight's episode, but it almost seems like a continuation of The Closer, and I'm wondering, how do you kind of distance yourself from that legacy of such a great show coming into it? Well, you, you don't. You don't distance yourself from it. You are a part of it. You know, Major Crimes uh, is a creation that emerged from the great legacy of The Closer. The characters, many of whom are continuing, it's still the major crimes division. Do you know what I mean? Of the LAPD, you're going to be in the murder room. You're very familiar with the murder room. You're going to be walking down the halls. You're going to be in the same interview rooms and the same electronics rooms. And you just go from that moment forward. And you don't distance yourself. You embrace it. Well, do you think the tone is going to be a little bit different? Or oh, yes. The tone is going to be different. And what's brilliant about what James has done and the writers have done is that the tone starts to organically change, and you are in a different show before you really understand that it's happened. There's no forcing you. There's no manipulating you. It has a sophistication in the way that it allows itself to morph into a new show. And it will have a different tone. It does. It has different tone, different rhythms. I just finished shooting episode 10. We finished um, at about 4 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. And I'm telling you that by the end of the season, there's no doubt that you're in a different, you're in a different show. Right, and I'm not comparing these shows, but when I look back at the history of TV, I think the one of the greatest spinoffs was Lou Grant, just to watch what Ed Asner did mm. with Asner from one show to the next, where he subtly reinvented yes. what he was doing. And I'm wondering, how are you reinventing this at all? I think, I think the word subtle is is a good one to bring up. That's a very good example. What I What I really felt very strongly at the beginning, and I still feel... Uh, was the right choice, is that there was no, I, I was very clear that I did not want to suddenly back away from that Captain Raider that we lovingly nicknamed Darth Raider. <laughs> and that this is a woman who has taken her job and herself very seriously. And I did not want to sort of drop all of those qualities of hers in order to make her become a protagonist as opposed to an antagonist. So the truth is, it's the same woman. The woman pivots, and the woman starts to unfold in front of you. But it takes a very respectful, very careful, very thoughtful, uh, and, and, and a lot of skill. It takes some skill to do this in a way that doesn't, um, doesn't give you the impression that you're being sold something new. You're not. You're watching a character grow into a new character in front of you, and that's been a real honor to try and pull off. What are some of your favorite aspects of the characters sort of morphing throughout these 10 episodes? I know that's kind of a lot of ground to cover, but I mean, what is the arc that you like the most about seeing her come back in, in this form? That she chose to, um, in this new position, that she chose to listen to the others. That she, ch that she has a leadership style that's actually kind of great and inclusive. That she's a fantastic leader, actually.
and discovering those things about her that we didn't know because we didn't know anything about the way she ran the department in IA. We didn't know anything about her background. We didn't know what, you know, what she studied in college or what she, what she was interested in before. We didn't know how she lived. She lives in a, she has a wonderful lifestyle. She loves the ballet. Do you know what I mean? Whoa, we didn't know any of that. So just sort of leaning into the nature of the woman that started to emerge in this new situation and that she has uh, the ability to hold the broader picture but get deeply involved in the present moment have been things that I've really enjoyed understanding about her. She has a good sense of humor, and I like that. Now, was this all new stuff that you learned as you got the scripts, or were you able to communicate with the writers and kind of pass along some of your own ideas that you gathered? They've been incredibly, James Duff has been incredibly open to collaborating and, and giving me an idea of what he's thinking about and letting me sort of feed into that and bounce off of it. He's been a great collaborator and he's such a talented man that you can say something to James that has a sort of, you might have an instinctive feel about something but you don't quite know how to put it into words that are usable but he hears you immediately. and he can put it into words almost immediately. So that's been a tremendous joy. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the guest stars you have coming on this season? Oh, we have incredible people. I, I have to say that um, my feeling about the guest stars is that they're they're being asked to do some remarkable uh, performances. Some They have to pull things off in some of these episodes that, you know, you've got to come in. You have to be an absolute pro to make some of this stuff work. And again and again and again that they have, they've been able to do that, come in in a day, be there, have it ready, pull it off, and give us what was maybe uh, a turning point in an episode or a plot point that we couldn't live without a great performance. So um, I've been very pleased with that. I think coming in as a guest, as I know well, and a very successful television show is a lot of pressure because everybody around you is very secure in, in their position and in their, um, in their characters. And yet you're being asked to work at the same level and just come in from the outside. So I have nothing but uh, a deep respect for the guest stars. Did you ever have an idea when you read a script about somebody who might play a character well and bring that to the producers and say, hey, maybe you might think about this person for this yes. role? Yes, yeah, I have had that a few times. Well, do we get to see that throughout this series? Are, are you, did you get to bring any of your friends in here? Or? Um, my, there are none of, my, none of my close friends are on this time. Maybe next season. Maybe. <laughs> I have a lot of friends who are great actors. Okay, well, um, that wraps up my time. Thank you so much for coming on and chatting about the show. I'm excited. For the thank day. you. Me too. Please join us. Oh, we will, and I'll talk to you later. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye.